Job chapter 9. We just had Bildad speak. Job answered. Then Job answered and said, I know it is so of a truth. But how should men be just with God? That's a great question. That question today is the Lord Jesus Christ. The law is not for Job. There is no law yet. There's Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Remember, we're in the time of Esau and his grandchildren. But there's no law. If he contend with him, if man contends with him, met God, he cannot answer him, God, one of a thousand. You know what's going to happen? God is going to say, Job, answer my question. Job's like, uh-uh. God's going to give Job the opportunity. Job's in throwing his mouth. Or if I could speak to, I mean, throughout the book of Job. God's going to give him that opportunity. I believe in, there's really no scripture. But I believe God, at the great white throne judgment, is going to let man speak his peace. And there'll be no contending. God, my religion. Well, Jesus Christ, the way, the truth, and the life. God, I never knew. Well, let me bring up the gospel text. Let me bring up the people that witnessed to you. Let me bring up the internet to show that you could have got the Bible free anyway. You know, we are in a day and age you can never say, oh, I didn't know. Because the Bible is free all over the place. King James. So man cannot contend with God. I bet he'll try. Verse 4. He, God, is wise in heart, mighty in strength, who has hardened himself against him. The man, who has man who has hardened himself against him? Many. And has prospered. Who has turned their heart from God and prospered? No. <coughs> Forgive me. Now, there are people who look like they prosper, and there are places in, in Job and Psalm, oh, look at the people that forget God. Look at the people who are against God. They look so great, but not in the eternal life. Which removeth the mountain, second advent, and they know not. Which overturneth them in his anger. That's second advent. How do they know that the mountain's been moved? They can't see it. You think this big mountain will move at the end of the seven years of tribulation, there's no moon, there's no sun, and there's no stars shining. And when you look out to the heavens, here comes this light. I've seen the light. You know, the train in the passageway. And that light is fire coming from the Lord Jesus Christ. The sword. Which God shaketh the earth out of her place. Second advent. And the pillars thereof there tremble. Now, the Bible speaks of many places about these pillars of the earth. Man has not found them yet. Somewhere in the side of this earth, there is a hollow place called hell. God. I wasn't supposed to say that, was I? Somewhere in the side of this earth, there is an empty place that used to be called paradise, Abraham's bosom. And somewhere inside this earth of hell, I didn't mean to say that, and the empty place... Now gone, there are pillars, there are columns holding the earth from going. <laughs> Can you imagine? And I'm going to guarantee, and I can't be wrong, I'm going to guarantee that they're beautiful. You say, how do you know that? Have you not seen the pictures of the universe that we can't see with the naked eye? Have you not seen pictures of the fish in the ocean that we're just finding now? Beauty. So I believe there's pillars in the earth. Which God commended the sun and it rises not and sealed up the stars. God is in control of the sun. During the time of uh, Joshua, the sun stays still. Okay. In the time of the kings of uh, Judah, I think it was, he said, let the sun go back. Okay. And there's coming a time, people say, well, the sun will always rise. No, it won't. There's coming a day that the sun will not rise, the moon will not rise, and stars. At the end of the seven-year tribulation period. Don't take that for granted. And seal it up the stars. God's in control. Which alone God spreadeth out the heavens, creator, creation. And treadeth upon the ways of the sea. That's the feet of Jesus. 
And God is upon the seas also, but there's Jesus. God's the one that threw everything out there in the universe. Not evolution. Everything is where God wanted it. Which maketh Arctus, that's north, Orion, that's west, that's the one with the belt, Pleiades, which is east, and the chambers of the south. Look at north, east, west, south. In the Bible. And there's a note here. I'm trying to find where it is. I have a note here, but I can't find where that number is. Oh, the chambers of the south. That is not seen from Palestine. When Job and his men look out to the, they can't see that. The chambers of the south. God which doeth great things past finding out. There are such mar marvels and wonders in 2019 of the science and, and physics and math mathematics and doctors and everything. There's a lot of things that men don't even know. They don't know even about the pancreas. God does. Uh, yay! And wonders without number. Everything that God has done. Lo, he, God. Goeth by me, Job. I, Job, see him not. He passes on also, but I perceive him not. God's a spirit. They that worship must be, must worship in spirit and truth. Job says, God's going right by me, and I didn't even know it. Behold, he taketh away death. Who can hinder him? Also taketh away chapter 1 and 2. He's taken away Job's health. He's taken away all, all his uh, mercy and all his wealth and all his children. Given the devil permission. And he said the first time, the Lord taketh the Lord giveth, the Lord taketh away. And with this, Job sinned not with his lips. Who can hinder him? Who's going to stop God from doing something? Who's going to stop the devil? God. Isn't that great? Who will say unto him, God, what doest thou? <laughs> I believe a lot of people, they had the opportunity. Again, I think the great white told you, why are you not going to accept my God? Because it's not God. Sorry. Depart from me, he worked in iniquity. I never knew you. I think the strongest people are going to have an argument with God is Catholics. Seriously. If God will not withdraw his anger, if God is angry with you and does not withhold his anger, does not stop his anger, the proud helpers do stoop under him. People are going to help you who are against God and going nowhere. There will be no victory if God's against you. And if a nation has been destroyed by something that God has brought, you can send all the food, money, and all that you want to send to them. People say, look how great it is. Look at my tax form. Look how wonderful. Look at the stuff I'm doing for these group of people. And you ain't going to help them one bit if God's angry with that nation, that group of people. You're not doing nothing with India when they're starving to death. And God is angry with them because they got hamburger walking around. They just call it grandma. You send all the food you want. Have all the television commercials you want. They're still starving. And their hamburger is still walking around. You want to, you want to have them as your gods? You want them as your okay, fine. Then let your gods feed you while they can be fed upon. God is not a cow. God given us cows to eat. Since Noah. How much less should I, Job, answer him? Alright, if all these people. The God that created everything. And if God is angry with you. And no one can he help you when God is angry with you. Where am I going to? Because Job has proclaimed righteousness. Job has proclaimed, hey, I'm not as those wicked angry people. Job is not blaming God for chapter 1 and 2. Notice that. If God is angry with the wicked, he took their stuff away. He, he caused this trouble. Me, I'm righteous. And Job has a self-righteous problem. Now, me who's righteous, what's, what can I do? 
and choose out my words to reason with him. What, what am I going to say to God? In the glory of, of being saved and a, and a child of God today, what can I appease God with? Nothing what I've done. Lord God, look, no, it's not that. Lord God, look at your son and look at what your son has done. Look at the gospel. Look at the bloodshed that Jesus Christ has done. And if I confess my sin, you are faithful and just to forgive and to cleanse me of my sins only through the blood of Jesus Christ. It's nothing else I can do. Now, Job don't have that. Job has what is present situation for him before the law that God's allowed for him as a Gentile. God, though I, Job, were righteous, see that? You see that? Job has proclaimed, I'm righteous. There it is. It took nine chapters. Yet would I not answer. That's true. Later on, when, when God shows up, Job's not going to answer. Well, he's going to answer to me like, Lord, I can't answer you. But I would make supplication to my judge, God. Lord God, please plead my cause. Please, Lord God, save me. Please, Lord God, cleanse me of my sins. Please, Lord God, forgive me. As we do through Jesus Christ. If I, Job, had called, and he had answered me, yet would I not believe that he had hearkened unto my voice. If I called out to God, God said, yes. Is that you, God? And this is the one that says, I have seen the words of God more than my necessary food. So there was a sense back then when God spoke to you and then when you really weren't sure if God spoke to you. The devil spoke to the false prophets. And they took it as being God. There, there are ministers, I'll say ministers in churches and whatever they call themselves. But I'm going to say ministers... And God has spoken to me. And God has not spoken to him. It is not the voice of God. And if it's not a King James Bible, it's definitely not the word of God. Verse 17. For he, God, breaketh me with a tempest. Well, there was a whirlwind that killed his children. And multiply it. That's the first time that word shows up. My wounds without cause. God has allowed. Now God did not do. God has allowed. These things to happen to me. Now he's not blaming God. He's not blaming the devil. He said, these things were allowed by God. And chapter 1. God giveth. And God taketh away. But there's no mean, nasty God that has out it. God has allowed me to have a blessing, and what he did was he took the blessing away. Those wounds are what he has right now. He, God, will not suffer me to take my breath. Is Job having a breathing problem with what he's got? Are these boils so painful and so multiply over his body that he's having trouble breathing? Maybe they're, they're clogging his nose or his mouth. Or maybe it's in the inside. I'm having trouble breathing. But filleth, that's the first time that word shows up, me with bitterness. Uh, I'm sitting here, I'm getting angry and angrier. And I've had it with these guys that are speaking to me. These guys are making, Joe's been good. But as these men are speaking, you, you guys are quacks. We'll see that in a moment. I've come in a few chapters. Job is about had it with the men, not God. And remember, it began with his wife. But you just curse God. Get it over with. Job, it's your fault. Job, you're the sinner. You're the reason why your children. Job, if you were better. Job, uh, false accusations. And when you have gone to somebody and you're talking what you don't know what you're talking about, you have can cause that person to be in bitterness and for you it would be a sin. And woe be to you at the judgment seat of Christ that you are uh, trying to help. No, you didn't. No, you not tried to help. And no, you did not help. And it's a sin. And you made it worse. 
Just as much as you made a Christian walk away. Jesus said it'd be better for you hanging a millstone about your head than, than to see one of these little ones. When you cause a Christian, somebody gone astray from God and gone astray from Jesus Christ, you're in deep doo doo. You're in deep trouble. If I speak of strength, look how strong I am. Lo, he is strong. God is stronger. Come on, Joe, want to arm wrestle? <laughs> The mighty God, the mighty right hand of God, the Bible speaks about, you're a loser. I'm a loser. All humans are losers. What strength do we have against God? None. And if judgment, who shall set me a time to plead? For me, Jesus Christ. Father, I know he sinned. Father, I know he's a sinner. Father, I know what the devil just said about it. But Father, he's put it through the blood. He's relying on me. He's our child. He's our son through me. It's under the blood, Father. That's us today. If I, Job, justify myself, look how good I am. Look how wonderful I am. Oh, look at My own mouth shall condemn me. And it's going to. It already has. Job has said, I'm righteous. <coughs> Job's mouth is already been. And the more, <coughs> excuse me, the more you're dealing with somebody about the Lord and the gospel, the more they're going to talk and the more they're going to hang themselves. Unless they put it under the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, they're in trouble. My mouth will condemn me. If I, Job, say I am perfect, it shall also prove me perverse. Now, Job 1 and 2, the Holy Spirit, God, and Satan said Job was perfect. Does that mean sinless? No. He's a sinner. Job did the best he could. You know what Job means perfect here? I, 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 look how great I am. Look how wonderful I achieved it. That's, this is the perfect means. Perfect. Job's like, uh, not me. But he's going to declare he's self-righteous. Wonderful and great. It shall be proved me perverse. Though I were perfect... <laughs> What are you trying to say, Job? Come out, Job. Say it. Yeah, you are perfect. Out of your own mouth and not the mouth of the Holy Spirit. Come on, say it. Yet would I not know my soul. I would despise my life. Yeah, okay. But you're getting there, Job. This is one thing. Therefore, I said it. He destroyeth the perfect and the wicked. All die. True. Wait a minute. I say he destroyed the perfect and the wicked. Job is stuck on that word perfect. But all will die. True. If the scourge slay suddenly of the whip, he will laugh at the trial of the innocent. God will laugh. Proverbs 1, 24 to 30. God will laugh at the wicked. And I can't even imagine what that laughter would be of a holy, righteous God for someone being condemned. God, I got my religion. I got my God. <laughs> Depart from me. You know, when we say "Depart from me," he worked as iniquity that I never knew. We read that kind of. Imagine Jesus saying that in a laughter kind of mood, like, <laughs> "Really? <laughs> okay, watch what happens to you, buddy." And then it gets all serious. But, you know, Jesus, didn't I do this? Jesus, didn't I have that? Jesus, <laughs> depart from me, you worker of iniquity. Carry him out. God is going to laugh at your religion. God's going to laugh at your God. God's going to laugh at you humanity. Then he's going to get serious. All right, depart from me. Because that's serious. Had you believed, had you received the love, had you trusted on Jesus, there would be no depart from me. The earth is given into the hand of the wicked. The devil and the antichrist. He's got the whole world in his hand. Who? The wicked. You can have this world. 
the devil sat with Jesus or stood with Jesus. All this I give you. If you fall down and worship me. And Jesus never said, well, hold, hold, hold on, time out. Hold it, Satan. It's mine. Jesus never said that. So the devil must have said something correct. The devil must have the power of the entire world. You cannot tell me that God was in the works of Adolf Hitler. But God allowed the devil to do that work through Adolf Hitler. And you don't know, I mean, if the world's given over to the devil, the wicked one, it could be your favorite president could be there by the devil. I didn't give no names. If you put a name in there, that's your own doing. I didn't put a name. He covereth the faces of the judges thereof. If not, where and who is he? He blinds the judges. Is that not what the era we are in today? The judges are blind. The judges see evil as good and good as evil. Can I have my money now? Bribery. And that's definitely one thing that's against God. Bribery and justice. My, now my days are swifter than a book. We're going back. Life is quick. Chapter 8. They flee away. They see no good. A lot of bad in, the, in your life. Life is good. Yeah, life also has a lot of troubles and problems. And it's quick. I went today to the auto place. And I said, I told the guy, I said, you know, you worked on my brakes last year. He goes, no, that was in March. I thought, time goes by quick. I thought, I thought it was going to be like one year or two years. And then things that happen and you look back like, that long ago? That long? Where did time go? It went by quick. They are passed away as the swift ships. Those are sailing ships back then. Imagine what Job would say today with ships. As an eagle that hastens to the prey. That hastens the first time that shows up. An eagle will go 200 to 260 miles per hour. NASCAR goes about 200 miles per hour, the average 190 miles per hour. When you watch those cars go around and around, that's about an average between 190 and 200 miles per hour. That eagle hits off 200 to 260 miles per hour, headed straight for that mouse that you can't even see. It says for that hasten of the prey. If that eagle sees a mouse or whatever that he hey, hey dinner, bam! Supersonic. And for 26, these ships, these swift ships and the eagle, that's supersonic in Job's day. And does not light seem that quick? Have you not had an anniversary and you're like, Wow, that many, uh, no offense, but it's been that long? Yeah, I thought it was only like yesterday. Life is quick. Now my days are swifter than a post. That's the postman. As quick as the mail is delivered. They flee away. They go bye-bye. They see no good. They are passed away as swift ship as the eagle that hastens to the prey. If I say I will forget my complaint, I will leave off my heaviness. Compla Remember he said earlier, I'm going to complain and comfort myself. If I'm going to complain, if I'm going to gripe and complain and miss, I'm afraid of all my sorrows. Remember he fears, he fears exactly what's happened in his life. It brings sorrow to him. I know that thou, God, will not hold me innocent. I'm guilty. Look at that. Job has proclaimed, I've sinned. I'm a sinner, and I can't say nothing before God. If God were to show up right now, okay, Job, I can't. You got to send me to hell. I, I have nothing to say, and I have nothing to plead. I'm not saying Job's going to hell, but that's what Job's saying. That's it. I'm done. I'm finished. My life has been so swift. My life has been no good and I can't plead to God. And it's sorry, many people that go the broad way, this is what's going to happen to them. 
They're going to stand before God with their jaw hitting down. Like, oh, that's not good enough? Nope. That wasn't right? Nope. You mean that man that said the way, the truth, and the life is Jesus, no access to the Father but by it? Correct. And I can't say nothing, Lord. Guess I'm guilty. Bend the knee. Thou art the Lord Jesus Christ. It's going to be amazing at that great white throne when people are going to realize they were wrong. Satan was wrong. That guy that sent them the gospel tract, that guy that preached to them, that guy that talked to them, the guy that had to open, they were correct. But then again, the other sorry thing, that, that rich man that went in hell, he never changed his attitude. The only thing he changed was, please go to my family and tell them about this place. That's the only change. That will not hold me innocent. I'm guilty. If I be wicked, if I be wicked, why then do I labor? Why then labor I in vain? No works can do it. Did you get that? I can't do nothing to please God with my works. If I wash myself with snow water, pure as water to be found in Job's time. If I were to do a, if I were to be baptized in the clearest water ever, and make my hands never so clean. If I could do works, look, Lord, my hands are clean. Yet shalt thou, God, plunge me in the ditch that the first time ditch shows up. God, if I baptize myself and I do all these great works, you're going to throw me in a ditch. And my own clothes shall adore me. Man, you stink. Woohoo! Take me off of your naked body, will you? You stink. You're terrible. You're vile. Can you imagine our clothes speaking out against us? Can you imagine God coming? I don't know, but it says, My own clothes shall adore me. Can you imagine <coughs> your clothes stepping up. Uh, you should have seen the places He's taken us. You should have seen the places He took us off. Whoa. You just saw what we didn't wear in the beach. Whoa. How about that? Be interested if our clothes talk. I don't know. Taking it could be worth garbage. I don't know. For he, God, is not a man. Now, when did he become a man? When he became Jesus Christ. There is no Jesus Christ now. Many, many, many years, at least 1,520 years, going by the date this Bible is that Jesus was born. He's not a man. He will be. We'll get into that later, too. As I am. He's a man for me now. He cried. He wept. He slept. He got hungry. He got thirsty. He got angry. He got annoyed. And he suffered and died, according to Scripture. And they buried him. But unlike any other man, he arose from the grave three days and three nights, according to Scripture. So he's not just any man. That I should answer him. We're going to give an answer to Jesus. All men will answer to Jesus. Old Testament, New Testament. And we should come together in judgment. There's one meeting between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. There's one advocate, 1 John 2, 1. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is our advocate. Jesus Christ is our mediator. 1 Timothy 2, 5 and 1 John 2, 1. We have what Job's speaking about today. Job says, I don't have anybody. We do. Neither is there any daysman. 1 Timothy 2.5, 1 John 2.1. Mediator and advocate. Right there. Daysman. That's the only place that word daysman shows up. We have a daysman. Job didn't. Betwixt us. That means in between. And that's a close in between. And I don't want to be gross or following that. But the Bible uses that word betwixt like the breast. That close together. 
Use the word between. It could be any any amount of space. Betwixt is close, really close. You know, God, Jesus Christ is so close to us, we have a comforter that dwells in us. That reaches out to God on the throne. Matter of fact, we are seated in heavenly places. That's how close we are to God. That may lay his hand upon us both. You mean a nail pierce hands one day? You know, he wants somebody to say, Father, God, Job, come on you guys. Come now, let us reason together. Though your sins be as scarlet, it should be white as snow. Isaiah chapter 1, 13 or 18, I forget which one. Job is asking God for Jesus. But he doesn't know the name of Jesus. He doesn't know the name of the Messiah. And he's got the prophecy that we learn in Isaiah. Now, if Job looked forward to the cross, why did he not mention J-E-S-U-S? Why did he not mention the cross? Why did he not mention Calvary? Because he has no idea. He's looking to God for a mediator, but doesn't know one's coming. Let him take his rod, beating, chastisement, away from me. God is doing it, but he's not doing it. But he's doing it. It's hard to explain. And let, let not his fear terrify me. And Job is saying, listen, I am afraid of what's happened to me. This has come upon me. We saw it in chapter 3. What I fear has come upon me. I am afraid of this agony. I am afraid of being alone. I am afraid of this loss. God, I need to go back fearing you again. I have taken my fear off you, which is wisdom, the Bible says. And now I'm looking at my surroundings like, what's going to happen to me? I need someone to reach out to me, God. I'm scared. I'm frightened. I'm broken. I'm a sinner. I need your help. That's what Job is saying. And Job has no Jesus. And yet Christians bellyache, and yet we have an advocate. We have the mediator. We have Jesus. We have the Holy Spirit making intercessions for us. We have the one that said, ask, ah, seek, and knock. Not Job. Let him take his rod away from me, and let not his fear terrify me. I am scared. I fear what God can do. Then would I speak uh -uh, and not fear him. God, if you removed everything off me right now and make it hunky-dory, I will fear you and not what's around me. But it is not so with me. Job is turning his complaint over to the Lord. Uh, he's telling the Lord the truth. God, I fear what, what you've done. And I always say, be completely honest with God. Tell him how you feel. You're not going to lie to him. If you do lie to him, he knows you're lying, and you lied. Say, Lord, I don't like this. Lord, I don't know. I, Lord, hell. Why am I in this predicament? What can I do to get right with you? As we just saw this chapter. Lord, what? It's not, Lord, what you've done to me. It's, Lord, what can I learn from you? What is it that's causing me that we can gain our fellowship back together? That's how it goes. 